Hello and welcome to this session where we're going to look at the process of connecting to the Data Sculpt server. And in the server, we want to manage our projects where we can run our Python scripts. And we also want to be able to give an external user access to our scripts through an interface. And so we want to enable other people through the internet to access our service or our code and our software in a managed way. So let's go ahead first and look at connecting with the server. And one of the best ways to do that is with this bit of software, uh, WinSCP. So depending on the platform you're working with, there will be some software that will allow you to connect with a server. And uh, that will be using the SFTP protocol. So that means secure file transfer protocol. And I'm just going to paste in here the IP address that uh, of the server that I want to connect with. And the port number is 22, that's right. And then the user ID and the password I'm going to insert here. So you see we've logged in now. And these are folders that are not on my local machine. So on the computer that I'm currently using, these folders are not present. This is now giving me the folders that are available remotely on a server sitting somewhere else in the world. So I can now operate on those server directories and uh, I can modify the, uh, the, the files in there. And I'm just going to delete the current project in that folder. Because when you log into your data sculpt space, these will be all the folders that will be present initially. So under your projects folder, you won't have any projects present. And then under your templates folder, uh, you'll find just one template at the moment. So I'm just going to copy this template and I'm going to copy that to my local hard drive. So in fact, I believe it's here already. So I've got the same template copied to my local hard drive. And then the first thing to do is go over to the projects folder and copy in one of the templates. You can watch the progress of the copying. Uh, that's uh, so the files being copied to the server. You can uh, watch them uh, being copied here. So only when it goes quiet and the text is kind of grayed out, uh, do you know that uh, finally the copy is complete. So remember when working with a server, there's some delay, of course, that's going to uh, be inherent between the transfer from your local machine to that external server that somewhere else in the world might be very far away. And so the, there is going to be some lag and uh, sometimes when we don't remember that, um, then we, we think there's an error in what we're doing when actually um, it, it's just a matter of waiting for the delay to work itself out. I'm going to rename this project. So let's just give it a name like this, project 001. So that's now a project that's been created within the account that uh, I used to log in. So uh, my uh, login name uh, is there and now to run my project, I'm going to go over here to my browser and I'm going to enter the string. So HTTPS and then uh, the address datasculpt.org and then the group that I'm in. So group zero one and then I specify here index.html and then you use the question mark to specify that you are going to send some parameters now. And then the first parameter is user ID. So the user ID that I've logged in with RAND and then uh, and and then we say project path. Note here the camel case. So project path equals and we've named the project PROJ001. So that's the project that I want to load up. So enter and you see that's now loaded up um, this project. 
So this is what came with the template. So all this uh, material, uh, the graphics and all that, that's uh, in the template and we'll take a tour of that just now. You'll also find in here, there is a screen about communicating with Python, so running an external Python script. So we'll take a look at that uh, in the next video. Um, and there will be many of uh, these upcoming sections, managing a database and uh, uh, further customizing the user interface and the application programming interface and, and all those things. Now, be, before we go into any of those, you can customize uh, some elements of this user interface already. And to do that, we'll go back into that project folder. So here, remember, we've, uh, we are now, we have an instance of the project here and to, to do some editing, we can go into the config file and open up config.js. So this is the nice thing about working with the WinSCP. You can pretty much edit the files directly on uh, the server. Um, so even though this is sitting on a server somewhere else in the world, we can directly edit this. And just when we save this file, it's going to save that to the server and then we can just reload our project. So if we look at some of the attributes in this config file, you can see the configuration is just specified as a, as a JSON object. And this JSON object has these attributes. So the service title, so my service 01, so that's a boring name for our service. Mm -hmm. So let's give it uh, something more descriptive. So um, my first uh, app. Right, not much more interesting, but anyway, um, let's just see what that does. So I've hit Control S and that saved that. And I don't know if you noticed, there was a little blink here um, on my uh, Win SCP, and that's because it. Um, and maybe let's do that again because it, it's a useful thing. Uh, so let's call it my first um, app, capital letters, and now. Um, just watch down here, there'll be a little flare on the Win SCP when I save that. So I'm hitting Control S now. And you saw, and so it, it flared a little green. So that uh, gives you a quick indication. Yes, it's saved to the server, and now you're ready to, uh, you can trust that that's, uh, that change is saved. So if we reload the page now, from my service 01 up in the top left, Oh, nothing's changed. So it might be that your cache has, hasn't cleared. So in your browser, make sure that you're clearing your cache. So I'm going and just going to drop that. Right, so I'm switching over to Chrome and uh, I'm rerunning this project. And there you see now it's uh, it's changed the name of that service. So it's um, uh, it's possible in the config file to change a couple of these things. So uh, maybe let's just do that again. Let's make this my first application. Right, Control S to save, and then you notice here it's flared green. So now we know it's it's ready, and uh, let's reload that. And now uh, we should see my first application there, right? So that's one thing. So you can change some of those settings on the fly like that. You can change the subtitle and then see here under sections. So let's just look at that side by side. Um, you can see here about Python ops, DB ops, page templates. So you can see all those here. And um, we, we can then uh, set all these uh, the tabs here. So we can change the titles of these tabs using the label attribute. So you can just edit the label. You can also change the name of the key. So if you don't use a label uh, in your attributes to this sub object, then it's going to use the, the key for that instead as the label. So notice uh, you've got the labels here and then it tells you also loader func. So loader function is where we specify, it's a method that we specify in a different file that tells um, the compiler what to do when the user clicks on one of those sections. So these are the sections, these are the main sections in your service. 
and now um, we uh, we can look at how to edit those sections. So to edit the sections, uh, let's go back to our project on the server, and you'll find here class.customservice.js. So that's your service, and you would basically go ahead and edit this file, and you can see here in custom service we've got show about. So you've got some code here, which is basically uh, giving the instruction for uh, rendering the, the interface. And maybe if we look at that landing page, so our home page is basically the about page here. And you can see a couple of things. You can see there's a title up here and then some text below that title. And then you've got these three columns. And in these columns, you've got an image, a title, and some text, and then you've got more text at the bottom. And if you look here in what we have instructed show about to do, um, you can see uh, the first thing up top here about my service, um, you can see here um, we are adding to the viewport. So the viewport is like, like the root object on the web page. So uh, your viewport, we are adding to the viewport um, this uh, about the about title so the syntax is the first argument to the add so we are adding to the viewport and then the first thing is the id of the thing we are going to add and then the type of the thing we are adding so aue div that just means there's a container uh, for, for some text and you can see here about my service and then my service is a template blah 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 so you can see that here about my service my service is a template so uh, there we've, uh, we knew we were just adding text. We didn't want to do any more operations on that. So we just went ahead and added that text into the viewport. However, uh, in this step, we are wanting to create a grid. So we want to create a, a set of columns. And then we know that we are going to add things into those columns. So this time we, uh, we add something to the viewport, but then um, we store what comes out uh, in another variable. So we just call it grid. Um, so we'll be able to use grid after that. And so we've specified an, um, an ID slug here. So here we've stored uh, the, the new object that we created. Um, it's going to be of type AUE grid, and we've just given it an ID of grid. Uh, an ID slug that is and um, and then in here we've created three columns in this grid so left middle and right and uh, and then that's grid so that's just the container space and then on the left side we add uh, an AUE card and you can see there's uh, a path to the image and there's uh, something about the title and the, the text and so on so uh, on the left in the middle and on the right so into our grid we add these AUE cards so you notice here the style of, uh, of operating on this interface is uh, by adding things uh, to other things so you, it's, it's basically a tree there's basically a tree structure behind this interface and uh, we specify an ID first of all for something that we are adding into something else and we specify the type. So AUE div is just a section, AUE grid, uh, it's also a section, but column wise, AUE card is the first kind of uh, customized um, user interface element um, and so on. And so there are several, um, yeah, there must be about 20 different types of user interface elements that you can use to create um, your documents. So that's the first one, simply the about page. And then if we go to part PyOps, the Python operations. Um, so you'll see here that's under show Py. And just a reminder, uh, let's go back to the config file here. So in the config file, remember um, Python ops, uh, we label that PyOps. So you can see here PyOps. And then uh, we are loading, uh, when, when the user clicks on that, then we load show Py. So in our, um, in our custom service uh, class here, we have to create a method called showPy. So there's showPy. And in showPy, um, it's a slightly different uh, element. So here you can see, uh, instead of that, that more kind of uh, simple text view, we now have a, a form here. And in, fa 
in fact that form is inside subsections so if you click here you can see this accordion style of uh, user inter interface <clears throat> so you've got um, subsections and in one of those we've uh, created a form and then you can see results here and send parameters so right here is where we are going to do some uh, of the things that we're really interested in which is uh, running a Python script, uh, so sending a request to a server and, and getting a response back and, and so on. So um, let's look at that interface. So here um, we again we create a grid, this time just uh, we use a template um, to speed things up. So if we use the LM template then it will create a, a panel on the left and then a, a space on the right. And then um, on the left side, we are creating uh, AUE tabs uh, accordion style. And we create the three sections that we can see here, run Python section two, uh, tab three, and, and so on. And then um, we are stashing into the run Python uh, section. So into this part here, we are stashing AUE form. So this uh, lets us create a form. Uh, where we can specify parameters that we then address to um, we address that to the uh, to the server and uh, in AUE form let's just have a look at the structure a bit so AUE form um, expects us to have an attribute fields and so we can see here all these fields so there are um, five fields action temperature pressure so action is here temperature pressure description and uh, date time so uh, date picker so there are different types of uh, of fields that you can uh, specify here so you specify a name and a type um, so if you don't specify a, a type then it will assume that it's just uh, a text box so those are the fields there and then you can also specify buttons and so here you can see exec and say hi so the exec one is a bit involved um, say hi will help us understand what this does so you see in the say hi button we've got uh, a callback attribute and that callback is actually a function so that's the nice thing about json in uh, in javascript it's really quite easy to uh, create an object it lets you attach functions even so here uh, we are uh, attaching the function uh, into this callback and the callback says uh, it, it alerts out hi so it's saying that uh, we want to create a button called say hi and then the action it will take when the user clicks on say hi is to create that alert hi so if we go here and click on say hi then you see um, it responds with that tie message. Okay, so uh, that just gives you a quick sense for uh, how we can uh, create that user interface. Um, and in the next one, we'll look at uh, what we are really interested in, which is running our Python scripts.